Hey guys, welcome back to Swag Studs. I'm back with the part 4 of how did I make it's an apple. In this part, we'll discuss about the lighting process of the apple. And if you guys haven't seen the last three parts of this tutorial series, I have put the link in the description. Do check out that too. Now, let's begin the lighting. So guys, we are almost at the end of this tutorial. We have looked uh, the layout settings, how I have done the layout, how I have done the shading and now we are going to look at the lighting setup. So mainly I have used this much of lighting and there is a spotlight for the key and there is an environment light which is an HDRI and then an area light and then last one a point light. So there is a main four lights and let me show you in the perspective view how it is placed. So this is as I have said when I was explaining the planning. This one, the spotlight is our main key light which is illuminating the apple from the top. And this is the light which uh, is giving that uh, soft shadow of towards the camera and giving that a uh, nice amount of specialized on the water drops and then last one um, the point light which is again I wanted a little bit kick light or uh, a little bit extra kick on the air drops just to get that bright bokeh when I am defocusing the render on Nuke so the point light was only for that purpose i wanted a little more illumination uh, on the water drops and then uh, the another thing which i have done on lighting is i have light linked particularly one light i have broken the spotlight illumination from the water drops and air drops because when i was rendering and uh, you know i was testing the lights the key light which was illuminating the water drops was giving hard specklers and it wasn't coming good and the uh, because of those hard specklers on the water drops the overall focus was not uh, just on the apple it was coming on everything so i wanted the viewers focus to just go on uh, apple and as you would see in the reference, the only thing that is illuminated or bright on the scene is the apple. Uh, the viewer suggestion just goes straight into this apple and uh, the water drops are just on almost blend into the background which is uh, almost dark. So that's the exact thing which I wanted to create. So we can do this with the light linking or you can do those uh, things in comp if you are rendering light groups with the beauty then we can definitely do these things uh, in the post process i have rendered uh, different light groups and also i have rendered crypto mats so it was pretty easy for me to do these uh, settings or adjustments in the com but i chose to do this in the render itself because the first thing i was going for it was i wanted to create this beauty uh, or the final output without post-processing so that was the initial plan but when i did some post-process i thought like it is definitely needed some tweakings on the comp because uh, there is some things which we can't um, create in render itself for example lens effects things like vignette uh, chromatic aberration those kind of things so instead of going or trying to create all these things in the render itself it was pretty easy in the comp so it's just your preference so i rendered one render with defocus from the arnold itself with a, a nice bokeh and of and everything it was looking nice but then when i was doing a little bit of post process afterwards and it was coming nice so i thought why not uh, try everything on like the defocus itself on the comp so the planning changes from time to time because initially we just plan everything in our mind but when you do these things in uh, on the softwares we 
come to know its limitations and uh, its problems. So we have to make decisions spontaneously uh, when we uh, get into all these two problems like this. So those were uh, spontaneous decisions and the overall process was pretty good. And so enough talking, let's continue with the lights. So we talked about all the lights, uh, the light links, and then there is an extra point light which I have added for the fog. I guess it's not visible here. Okay, sorry, the wrong light. So this one, I have only added the volume. There is no diffuse, no spotlight, no trippers, nothing at all, just for the volume. And the spotlight, nothing fancy. I'm just adding uh, the settings I need. Okay. And the spotlight, I have adjusted the corner angle, perimeter angle according to my need, how the beauty is coming for those lights. And exposures, it's all just. Uh, testing all these settings on the render and seeing uh, what is working and what is not it's just repeated renderings and it's a longer process the lighting took like uh, two three days to get into that final shape so there was a lot of testing with the different settings so this was the final settings i have done with the lights so apart from the fog spotlight no other light has volumes. I have disabled every other volumes except area light. Okay, so there is a little amount of volume from the background. So almost overall the background has the only fog in the scene. And for the fog, I have used an atmospheric volume. And in the color, I have added a cloud which is a 3d texture which will be giving a breakups in the volume in the 3d space so it was a good choice and it gives that feel of like actual smoke if i put a flat color on the atmospheric volume the volume will not be breaking so i'll not get the breakups with the flat colors that's why i did i tried adding cloud and it came good so that's the lights and then the next thing I have added was the blockers. So for the render, as I've said earlier, the only thing was eliminated or the first focus that should be on the apple and in here after every tweaking of the lights and everything still i was uh, i was not satisfied with the elements of the um, water drops on the ground because it was still quite brighter compared to the apple so i wanted to reduce it still a bit further so so I can't just reduce the intensity of the lights because the intensity from the light for the apple was accurate. So I didn't want to change those intensities. So if I change the light intensity, then I lose the beauty of the apple. So that's why I've added blockers for the ground. And then there is some amount of air drops which was coming to the front side of the apple at first. So in order to make them dark, I've created this one. Then it was coming like a big, thicker uh, water drop on the front side of the apple and it wasn't working with the composition. So I removed it. I didn't use it on the final render and I still forgot to remove this from the render. It's not blocking any lights of the apple. I've completely placed it in a way that it doesn't affect apple so it wasn't really not making any problems in the scene so uh, i didn't notice its presence there if you see the lights in the light filters you can see the blockers here on the spotlight and the point light yeah 
the point light has these two, two blockers and the spotlight has only one. So creating the blockers is pretty easy. You just select a light and then here you can add one or if you go to the add attribute, you can click the drop down menu. You can see here the blockers which are already in the scene and also the you can create a new blockers from the list. So we have four blockers in, in here. Okay, the point light has a DK blocker also. So what DK does is it's limiting its intensity into a particular area. There is two options, use near attenuation and use far attenuation. I'm using here the far attenuation. So what the far attenuation does is after this particular distance, the light will be decaying into zero so by default the light will be emitting up to maybe this point here but if you put any value here uh, which 10 means 10 units so after 10 units there won't be any lights visible so let's just say the 10 if the 10 unit is from here to here then all these area after the point the light won't be visible so that's what DK does. It decays the light from from a given point because the point light was only used to emit these uh, water drops. I didn't want to emit the light on top of these water drops because I am already uh, removing the specklers and everything from the water drops just to get that desired look. And if I am if this one is emitting more light into it then it will be again getting those highlights and everything and the composition will be again get going flat so that's the overall thing about lighting and let's just now render a frame and i'll show you each light groups and what it does let's just Turn off the motion blur just for now, so the render will be faster. So now I'm going to so now I'm going to isolate each light and see how much information it provides to the scene. So if you see the environment light, I have put the intensity very low. I just I just wanted the overall field because I don't want anything goes completely black, but in the post process, I'll be crunching the blacks very much, uh, taking almost all the information from the background and creating a uh, mostly uh, dark background um, but i wanted the renders to have some uh, some amount of uh, information on especially on the apple i didn't want any part of the apple to completely go dark or black so that's why i needed some amount of fill from the front or side just to keep a little bit fill to the apple so then our key light so this is our key light information and if you see here it's supposed to give these water drops a specular uh, spot but because i broke the light link of the spotlight from water drops these water drops are not getting any lights from the main key light and then the next one our area light which is getting up the background so here we get a little bit of specklers on the apple and most of those water drop highlights are coming from the area light and then you can see here the volume so if i put the volume to zero you see this is the volume so this is our back area light which is creating these elongated shadows our spotlight has those crisp sharp shadow just below the apple it's not elongated our area light shadow is elongated and then the fog 
which is giving those atmospheric volume from the spotlight. And then last, the point light, which is giving me these highlights on the water drops. So I'll show you what DK does here. So if I turn off the use fire attenuation, it illuminates more wide area. So I'm using it, it's narrowing the area which is getting illuminated. So if I again narrow it down, it will be again narrowing the area. So almost zero. You can see because it's a point light, it's illuminating all around 360 degree and it's like a sphere. So you can say this is this is acting like uh, the radius of the sphere. If I put it into you know another amount bigger than two, the sphere gets bigger. I mean the volume of the light gets emitted becomes wider. So let's take it back to the default. So these are our lights and all together we get this nice output so i guess we have talked all about the lighting here i hope i haven't missed anything about lighting just now we look at the render settings so i am rendering it on 3k i didn't go 4k because you know I was doing look dev mostly on 3k resolution so it's if i am planning on doing the shot or the composition on a 2k resolution uh, i'll check how much any asset will be coming in that frame uh, how much of that frame will be filled with the, that particular asset and for the 2k resolution if the object is coming only on the 1k part of this in this apple it's coming around 40 percent of this resolution so if it is 2k resolution and it's uh, the apple is com only coming on the 1k i'll maybe i'll add uh, try to look at the apple trying the renders and doing the procedural textures on 2k resolution if i am doing it on 4k resolution i'll have to add more and more details on it because more resolution we have we have to show more details so and uh, after i have done the look dev on 4k and i'm rendering it on 2k most of those details i have worked on will not be visible on the final image so always be cautious about how much resolution you are rendering and uh, do look devs according to those uh, resolutions so always uh, look out for those things so i also did the look dev of the apple on uh, 3k so overall the all the details were visible i wasn't losing any details and uh, uh, i didn't feel like the detail was, was uh, not enough so i found my sweet spot and sampling so i have put here camera samples 12 because for the water drops i was creating a simple motion because i wanted the water drops to feel like it it is falling on the apple so i wanted uh, some motion on the water drops so that i feel like it's falling from the top not like it's froze on the air or it's just I have put some bubbles on the air. It should feel like water drops falling from the air. So it will have some motion. So I have animated the air drops. You can see I have keyframed all the air drops together. Just two frames. I've put a key on the frame number one and I've added a mesh value and then I've put a key on the frame number three and I've rendered frame number two so that I get that, you know, motion. So because it was so much tiny uh, objects and there was motion blur, camera samples is the only thing that will sample the motion blurs and depth of field in the render. So I had to up the camera samples a lot 
so that's why I've put the camera on the screen to told I've never been that far before and this was a single frame as I've said earlier this is a single frame render and you know the render time was handy my workstation could handle the render time it was just 2.5 hours uh, so it was okay and most of the elements in the composition was subsurface shaders and uh, the water shader which is a refractive surface so i needed more samples when i've rendered with even with the 12 camera samples i was able to see some amount of noise in the apple and the water drops so i've put just transition and triple samples into two because i needed more samples on them and also coming to samples i have put light samples uh, here environment environment always have the most amount of noise because it is sampling a large amount of area i usually put env samples always into uh, three and then the spotlight has samples of two area light has two because we have a lot of camera samples here so we don't need to go for very higher samples on the lights uh, usually, I do put the camera samples in between uh, 5 and 7, so here we are going into a uh, very high amount of camera samples, so uh, usually I go for samples, uh, 3 on lights here, I never wanted the samples to go that high, so that's why I've put uh, the samples into 2. Okay, coming here. The point light and the area light are only emitting speculum rays because you know I was getting enough light for the apple from the spotlight. You know the apple is mostly lit with only one light. We can't see any other lights information. Just it's even if the background area light is hitting the apple it's just hitting the back side of the apple you can't see any information of those lights in the top if there is any information from the area light uh, from the back side it would be visible on these sides also we are not seeing anything except these things uh, i guess these are, these are from the uh, backlight which is that area light i have put so that's why i've uh, removed the triplets and refraction from the area light because even if its scattering happens on the apple it will not be visible to us because it's hap it will happen on the back side of the apple so uh, removing the triplets from the area light will save some render time for me so that was all the these these are all creative decisions you know on the DDR workflow this breaking the physicality of the lights which is not advisable to a, a beginner okay uh, a word of advice these are not physically accurate workflow because changing these options breaks the physicality of the light because you can't see a light which is only emitting specular in the real world this is not a physical physically accurate lighting but still, I have already done every uh, look dev properly and it's lighting properly. And this is the last stage which uh, I am matching my output with the reference. So in this case, there will be some things which I will have to do just to get that mood and feel. So. All these things I can even do it in comp or I can do it in render. So I advise you to not play with these uh, sliders unless you are on the end of your project. Because if you are playing it from the beginning of this uh, lighting, it's possible that you end up messing the whole lighting setup i changed all these things after i have finalized my key light and fill and everything and these were all uh, some kicker lights which are imposing the background a little bit so it wasn't really 
contributing any information to our main object which is the apple so that's why i have decided to uh, change all these settings in the render itself because even i have rendered it with the, all these uh, attributes on i would have changed all these in the comb itself just to get just to match with the final output so it was a creative decision uh, and i didn't do it from the beginning itself no i have placed all these lights uh, on the positions and i have adjusted the illuminations and uh, these are all the last minute uh, creative decisions which i have made so i advise you not to play with all these settings uh, if you are a beginner you should not be playing with this because then you won't understand the physical properties of lights simply if you are a beginner try your best not to mess with these settings finally back to the render settings and things i have been used the adaptive sampling in here i've used it in a project which i did after this one you know i'll be explaining how i did the adaptive sampling method in arnold render in the next project and then what will i be changing is the rated these are just indirect bounces number of indirect bounces and i have put diffuse and specular two bounces and the transmission was eight because there is a lot of water drops and i guess if it was a brighter scene i guess transmission eight number of bounces will not be sufficient but in this case this one is a very dark scene and we will not be seeing if we can see through every water drop so we can't see all those things so eight was enough and then environment i have added an atmospheric volume and i have used motion blur just for the motion of the water drops and then i usually adjust the light low light threshold 2.01 but in this case it's a very very dark scene so i put it on the default i haven't used any uh, dx except for the hdri and these are all usual settings i haven't changed anything so ao is i have created crypto mats for this and these are my usual aos which i use for compositing in the new i always render direct and indirect information separately and it gives uh, me a better control over the comp if you click on the triangle and scrolls to select aov node in some of the uh, aov nodes i have used light groups so uh, now it's the perfect time to show you the light group setting so it's nothing i have put uh, numbers on each of the light uh, here you can see every not the spotlight but every other light has a light group number and here on the aov if you turn off the all light groups you can select uh, the light group numbers and it will export a specular direct for each of these one each of the lights and if you select the all light groups it will uh, render specular direct separately for whatever lights which we have on the scene so for a light group by default every light group name will be coming as a default like this so if you have a uh, any light which we don't want as a light as in a light group you should definitely remove the default name from here and uh, if, or else it will come in the light groups with the name default now just to show you the aos I'm doing a quick render again So I have used here an RGBA which is used for 
light groups. So I'm exporting all the light groups RGBA here so that uh, I get specular, diffuse, triplers, all combined information of one light together in one AOV. So this is the spotlight information, uh, triplers and speculars and everything all together. And this is the AMV information, environment light. And this is the uh, our area light, which is coming from the background. And this is the spotlight. Also, if you come to the specular direct, you can see we have a specular direct uh, AOV, which has all the specular information from all of the lights. And we have separate specular information of each light. So this come in handy in the compositor when we are <coughs> doing the post process. So if I want the specular of the environment light uh, a little brighter, I can just tweak it in the com with just these uh, specular direct zero AOV or the specular uh, key speculars i can do it in the com with the the AO, this AO. so that's the purpose of uh, creating all the uh, different light groups for each light uh, for the comp so this is the triplers information of the spotlight this is the triplers information from env light and why i have only chose to put some of the lights on particular AOVs because I have tried creating all the lights uh, for all the AOVs and I have uh, noticed that some of them has no uh, no or almost zero information in it. Uh, it's just you know it just creates some AOVs which has no information and it just contributes to the file size so we will be creating a large file uh, with uh, lot of AOVs which has no information at all so just to optimize the file size I've uh, reduced the number of AOVs uh, here and I was rendering the beauty just straight from the Arnold render view and saving it as an uh, multi-layer EXR and uh, sometimes what happens is some of the utility uh, AOVs like Z depth and position pass might not work when we save from here so for that I have created a utility pass which has only the utility nodes like cryptomat cryptomat doesn't work when we save it from the Arnold render view it doesn't uh, encode the cryptomat data with the beauty we, we can only see it see the cryptomat information here but the selection won't work in nuke we have to do a bash render if you want to get the cryptomat information correctly and also sometimes zdef works only when we bash render it so that's why i've created this one a utility pass and i'm using the exr format for all this so that it's handy when you know you get all these passes in the single IOV so that's why I'm using EXR and so that's all about lighting and rendering thank you for watching this tutorial if you like the video hit the like button and also drop your reviews in the comment box subscribe this channel for more future contents I'll see you with the last part of this tutorial next till then this is Swat signing off bye